over the moon excited because less than an hour ago, we bought this. I just came from the dealership and uh, you know, I'm in the afterglow of buying a brand new truck. And of course, if you're wondering what this is, I'm sure you know at this point, it's the brand new 2024 Ranger Raptor. And we always try to make you a promise, and that is you saw it first on the fast lane truck. So the second we got into our offices, I set it up in the studio, and I wanted to give you a walk around of this truck so that you can see uh, first and foremost what we bought and then answer any questions that you may have about it. Now, let's start talking about Raptors because really this is the smallest and the least expensive of them. Um, Price-wise, let me get to the Monroney and I'll show you what we got and how much we paid for it. Uh, where's the Monroney? Ah, here's the Monroney. We have the Monroney. And there aren't a lot of options you can get. Oh, come on over here. There aren't a lot, a lot of options you can get on a Ranger Raptor. So all in, we're at 57,560. So what we didn't get was uh, the beadlock capable wheels, and we also didn't get uh, a sticker package. But besides that, that's about all that we didn't get. And you know, for 50, let's call it $58,000, you get a lot of truck. Uh, you get heated seats, heated steering wheel, adaptive suspension, twin turbo V6, which we'll look at in a second with over 400 horsepower, a 17 MPG combined, which isn't grand, but isn't horrible, uh, leather seats, a lot of color in the interior, and of course, these 34 inch uh, KO3s, which, you know, I'm a big fan of KO3s. Um, actually, I'm a big fan of KO2, so it'll be fun to see what the KO3s are like. Uh, and of course, all kinds of different drive modes, different exhaust modes, different steering modes, um, you know, just a lot of truck. Having said that, we bought our first Raptor, which was a 6.2 V8, first generation Raptor for $53,000 like 10 years ago. So inflation has caught up to the prices of trucks. But then of course, compare it to, you know, a Bronco Raptor, which is probably $85,000, $90,000. Uh, same thing for the Raptor F-150. And if you're talking about a Raptor R, you're well over 110, probably realistically more like $120,000. So as far as Raptors go, you know, this is uh, the least expensive until of course they come around with uh, the Raptor Maverick, or is it Maverick Raptor? Probably Maverick Raptor. That one actually would be really cool as well. So let's start as we always start, and that is under the hood. And if you're wondering where everybody else is, well, it's the end of the day here, so most of the team has gone on to have a nice weekend, but I was so excited that we got this truck, I just needed to share it with you. So, under the hood is a twin turbo V6 um, that, Zach, what's the, what's, how big is the engine? Is it a four liter? Three. Three liter, sorry, it's a three liter. I've never opened this, so give me a second here. Thank you, Zach. Oh, no, engine cover. I'm seeing it the first time as you are, paired to a 10-speed automatic, and I believe it's the same engine that's in the Bronco Raptor. Uh, so you do get, uh, you know, quite a bit more power than you would in the Tacoma that we have, which is a Horsepower, Thank you. 430 pound feet of torque specifically. Also, wanted to give a shout out to Brian for his super chat. We already got a super chat and we just started. Thank you, Brian. That'll help pay for the truck. <laughs> and of course, what, what makes this unique, uh, and I think, oops, cool. Now I can't close it. All right, come on. There we go. Uh, is the classic Coke bottle shape. So you've got these big haunches and fender flares that come out, you know, that uh, I think make it much more attractive than a standard Ranger. Uh, I don't know what this paint is called. Let me look at this paint. It's red, but it's really more orange than red. So let me see. We try to get colors that are, you know, that pop on video. Uh, so hot pepper red. Um, I was right. With ebony leather trim C. So this is a very much a spicy tamale uh, of a truck. And when, we, when I've got the door open, why don't you come in here, Cole, and I'll sit down inside there and I'll show them the inside. Now let me turn on the light here so you can see. There we go. Close this so it's not so messy. And uh, we'll kind of go over the interior. I've got the key, or the key's in the truck. 
And let's let's see uh, let's see what the interior is like. All right, I'm gonna just um, bring up the screen now. Here we have a horizontal screen. That Mustang behind us has a I mean a vertical screen. The Mustang behind us has a horizontal screen. But immediately, I love the fact that you've got both the volume knob and HVAC buttons uh, that control everything. There's also a Qi wireless charger here, uh, nice red accents or orange accents, same thing with the little center position on the wheel. Big fat old wheel, uh, leather with, you know, suede inserts. No sunroof, but you do get six auxiliary switches. So if you want to do your truck up with a winch or with additional lights or with all kinds of other fun things. You've got six auxiliary switches. That's going to become a mark of um, the Raptors now. Also, a built-in brake controller, which is pretty cool. Uh, and um, this truck only tows about five and a half thousand pounds, uh, which, you know, once upon a time was a lot for a mid-sized truck. Today, it's probably not as much. Uh, I think the Gladiator behind us, if you get it configured right, can go up to uh, 7,000 pounds, but 5,500 pounds is probably enough for a small camper, small boat, uh, maybe a set of side-by-sides, maybe a side-by-side. -side. Uh, and then, of course, this big, fat steering wheel, and then you've got, you know, which I actually like, you've got automatic two-high, which we're in right now, but you also have four-high, uh, which is really nice. So our Tacoma doesn't have the four automatic option, which means that when you put it in four-high, it does tend to crab when the conditions go from let's say snowy or slip dry and it's nice that you can just keep it in four automatic and let the truck do what it wants without the thing crabbing of course four low uh, various uh, modes uh, let's see what happens when I push that backup camera let me close the door here because it's in the door is ajar uh, so various modes uh, for off-roading um, there you go and shows you um, you know your PSI your uh, degrees uh, and probably what makes this uh, you know very cool and competitive with let's say the ZR2 uh, Colorado is that it's got both a front and a rear locker so you can completely lock it up and there's your lockers right there I don't love them in the screen I think they'd be better to have them actually as physical buttons but there you have it you also have show them over here Cole you also have different exhaust notes so like the Mustang you can go from normal to sport to Baja back to quiet uh, and I think actually having driven this from the dealership they do pipe in the engine note, which I'm not a big fan of. The Mustang uh, does sound better with that big old Coyote V8. Uh, you also have suspension settings. Uh, doors ajar, okay. Okay. So where's my, where's my, where's my Raptor button? Uh, and there you go. And then you can configure, of course, your steering, uh, which is kind of cool. Let me, come on, let me configure the steering. Maybe it has to be on. I don't want to start it, but it's not going to be configure the steering. So you can go from normal uh, to comfort, to sport in, in the steering. Lots of ways to configure this truck. Uh, electric seats, both passenger and driver, and actually you also have lumbar support, uh, which is another nice feature. Uh, so it is very well optioned, uh, and um, yeah, uh, very comfortable actually. So let's see how comfortable the rear seat is, because one of the problems of a mid-size truck, obviously, is that there's not a lot of room uh, in the back seat. So let's Give that a shot and see how I fit. Oh, look at that. We've got uh, carpeting here, uh, which is uh, something we actually don't need because if you look, we got, maybe we bought this. I'm not sure if Andre expected this truck out, so I'm not sure if we got that as an additional cost, but we do have, uh, we do have a mess in here because we were driving it back from the auction, I mean from the dealership, and had to stop and have some lunch. But we do have uh, rubber mats. This is set to myself. You know, it's not horrible. I do have plenty of leg room. Obviously, my seat is way back, uh, so I don't have uh, much leg room. But I do have foot room, uh, and uh, it's not straight up. I think if somebody were to move the seat forward, I could actually be pretty comfortable back here. All right, let's look at payload. Uh, it's always interesting. That should be over here, Cole. So we'll look at the little jam. Uh, payload is actually surprisingly good. 626 kilograms or 1,382 pounds. You know, Zach, that's getting like full-size truck. 1,308, that's 1,400 pounds of payload. That is surprisingly good, Ford. You deserve a cookie. Uh, what you don't deserve a cookie for is the fact that 
you don't uh, get bed lining with the truck. So you immediately, if you want to protect this bed, have to go out and spend $600 or have the Ford dealership do it. Now, we didn't have the Ford dealership do it. I mean, the, we didn't have do it at the plant uh, because we wanted to get this truck first and sometimes getting the thing bedlined uh, takes a little bit more time. Uh, so we're gonna have to go get it bedlined. And if you think about the fact like a Tacoma has a composite bed, so does a Ridgeline, that's another 600 bucks that you're gonna have to spend unless you wanna scratch it up and have it start to rust right away. Uh, Zach, are there any comments before we keep going? Um, just a lot of comments saying that it's a pretty cool truck. Um, one said um, from Arturo, I need y'all to add a car seat test to your reviews, particularly with this one. So That's a great question. My but, wife will let me buy it. Yeah. That's a great comment. We should. Let's get a car seat and we'll put it in the mid-sized trucks and see, you know, because that, that is a perfect uh, bench seat for a kid seat. Anything else, Zach? said hate the piped in sound that's it is very much a love it or hate it feature yeah i'm trying to see if you can see these fox adaptive shocks and they're very well hidden i'm looking underneath here right now <coughs> so if you come this way cole you're gonna have to go underneath and you to see them that's one of the things you're paying for are those hey they kind of match the color of the truck look at that are those adaptive shocks uh, and that's what of course raptors are known for uh, is their ability to cross the desert at high rates of speeds while you're comes that's good i don't know if there's any uh, aftermarket uh, winch ready bumpers but i'm sure those will come along very quickly you do have your little fog lights or auxiliary lights uh, forward facing camera which is always nice touch and do we have the little mark lights that a, you know the raptor is probably not because it's probably not wide enough so none of those like traditional i think i would have put those on there just for fun if i were ford there you, go, you Ford. have a little cutouts here where you could put those amber marker lights. Yeah, yeah. So you could put them over there. Uh, we do have the Raptor uh, running boards. Uh, these are actually very nice, and they do say Raptor. Hey, real quick. Yeah. Just, I need to show you something about mine. Yeah, go for it. Um, Joe is asking, disconnecting sway bar, no. No, no disconnecting sway bar. I think you have to go to like the um, Chevy for that, actually. And the Tacoma also has that. So you are missing a disconnectable sway bar. Uh, so it becomes a question of, you know, pick your options and pick your truck. Um, let's talk about price. Oh, I like these, I like these dual exhausts. Uh, those are pretty cool. Uh, and then uh, the tow hitch does stick out pretty far, which is nice. And then over here you have, obviously, your hookup for your trailer. And then this looks pretty usable. Uh, your little hoops for your chains. Uh, so that's all good. Uh, the tailgate is dampened, also nice. And then we have, um, I'm, like I said, I'm noticing this like you are, we do have actually two power outlets right there, uh, but no like onboard power. This one is, how much is this one? 120 volts, 400 max watts, 12 volts, 180 watts. So that's for, I don't know, I don't know, whoever you, do people still use these? Uh, tie downs are okay. There's one, two, Three, I mean, once again, tie downs are something that the aftermarket takes care of, but you know, three is probably barely enough. Uh, and it is, it is a pretty tall truck. I mean, you're rolling on 34s, so getting stuff up here is not gonna be easy, but sitting on it is gonna be very easy. Go ahead, Zach, what else we got? We'll talk about price in a second because I wanna talk about price and competition. Okay, uh, real quick. Uh, Sammy Jamie says, the upcoming hybridized TRD Pro Tacoma will kick this Raptor's ass. That has yet to be seen. All right, let's talk about that. So, so the TRD uh, Tacoma, uh, and then the, what's the, what's the even nice? The over is it Overtrail? I always get mixed up with Lexus. The Tacoma. Yeah. Oh, Lexus is the Overtrail. Yeah. And what's the Tacoma version of that called? Uh, so the oh, Tacoma the, now has both the TRD Pro and the Trail Hunter. That's right, the Trail Hunter version of it. Yeah. Um, so um, we know that you can now buy a Tacoma for $50,000 at least, if you, if you spec it up with a TRD Pro. Ours was yeah, 45. Yeah, 24 TRD Pro yeah. would probably be a little bit higher than 50. So that's where the past check one was at. Yeah, I think you can add, I think you can add at least two or 3,000 to that for a TRD Pro. So you're probably looking at, you know, low 60s for a TRD Pro. Uh, and the Trail Hunter, maybe 65. We'll know those numbers soon enough. I mean, very soon. Uh, and then, of course, you can go and spec out the uh, ZR2 Colorado Bison and 
I don't remember the prices on those. We did a video with Andre, but those get up to like 60, high 60s, I believe. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, give or take a couple thousand at parity with the Ranger Raptor. I mean, they all compete in the same kind of youth there. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, at $57,500, uh, dare I say it, this may be the most affordable of the kind of super mid-sized trucks. And of course, you're not competing with the full-size truck cost. And you're not going to get a discount. And let's be real, you're probably going to have to pay over sticker to get one of these. And we didn't have to because, you know, you guys watch our videos, so we paid sticker. But I'm very well aware that that's because, you know, this is what we do and not because we're special. So a few other questions. Um, Red Hawk asks, uh, what about doing a bed rug instead of a spray and bed liner? Eh. Yeah, I don't like the bed rugs. Uh, stuff gets underneath them and then... Uh, it gets scratched up, and then they're not. I don't. I just don't like them. They're just. They're, I mean, a, a spraying bed liner just makes the bed so much tougher, uh, and then you just feel like you can throw anything in there, from rocks to bicycles to motorcycles, without having to deal with like something that can come flying out of it. And then uh, Bush Cream asks, "Is the Ranger made in Mexico?" No, the Rangers for the U.S. market are manufactured at the Michigan assembly plant in Wayne, Michigan, same as the Bronco. Yeah, so it's an American-made truck. Uh, and, of course, the Tacoma is made in uh, Mexico, if that's something that, 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 you're, um, that affects your buying decision. Um, so, in general, I can give you kind of a, a quick review of it, because I did drive it from the dealership here. Um, so, I'll give you my surprising facts. Let's go, let's go to the front of it, instead of looking at the butt of it. I'll give you the facts that surprised me the most about it. So, first and foremost, you know, Raptors are known to be powerful and quick. Um, and maybe I'm spoiled with, you know, all the electric vehicles that we've had, but it doesn't seem all that quick to me, Zach. I mean, yeah. it feels good, adequate, but it doesn't like, it, it by no means does it take your breath away. This to me feels like probably a zero to 60, and, and those numbers I'm sure are out there, but like a six second truck in that area. Uh, and that's maybe because we've been driving a lot of electric cars. Secondly, I do love the suspension. One of the things I loved about the original Raptor was uh, it just wallowed down the road. Uh, and this is a little bit more controlled. It's got a little bit more um, uh, tautness to it, uh, but it does have a really nice ride. So expansion joints, potholes, it doesn't care. Uh, and finally, um, I like that it's tidy. That's probably the best word I can use. It feels like it's nice, nicely sized. So when you're you know, out there off-roading uh, and you're you know, in the forest, and it's very tight. This is a truck that you can get through. You don't have to necessarily worry about the fact that it's massive. Because let's face it, the Raptor and now even some of the uh, uh, other heavy-duty trucks have become so big that you feel like you're getting completely uh, out of control sometimes when you're off-roading them. This just feels nice and tidy. Uh, and it fits in your garage, which I think is a huge thing uh, for most people. Um, most full-size trucks won't do that. And I've kind of, this is a personal thing, I've kind of come full circle where I started off uh, loving mid-size trucks and then I thought, well, if you're going to get a mid-size truck, if you're going to use it, you might as well just get a full-size truck for the same cost you can do it. Uh, and then, of course, I worked my way up to heavy-duty trucks, which I just fell in love with the power and the size. And now I've kind of come back full circle to, to mid-size trucks because of the ease of using them uh, and the ease of everyday life when you're living with one. Are we good, Zach? You seem, you seem uh, concerned. I'll come over to you. No, there was uh, some folks saying the stream died. It seems to be okay on our end. All right, so good. All right. Hopefully folks are having a decent experience there. Um, as far as questions go, there have been a few questions asking about the... Uh, mods and accessories, aftermarket support, or lack thereof. I would say um, for give, folks give, looking for aftermarket accessories, give it time. Yeah, give it a year. You know, I'm sure it won't take long. The new range just came out, uh, and so this came out. I know a lot of you are, there have been waiting for a long time. It feels like forever for the new Ranger. I think, you know, Ford got caught with the supply issues and COVID issues, and the Ranger was supposed to be out probably at least a quarter ago, if not longer, maybe end of, end of last year, and here we are in April this year, and finally the vehicle's out here. Uh, but I think, it was I think it was worth the wait. Now, uh, we have done a huge comparison of all the mid-size trucks. We just drag raced them. Uh, this weekend, we're publishing a video where we're doing the Denver 100, which is an MPG loop, to see which one is the most fuel efficient. So uh, be sure to go to AllTFL if you want to check out which is the least and most fuel efficient mid-size truck. Uh, the other thing uh, that we're doing uh, coming up very soon uh, is um, a comparison 
of, what am I forgetting, Cole? What other video did we do with all six trucks? Oh, yeah, the most important one. Uh, Tommy slip tested them all. Uh, and the results are surprising. So if you actually want to see how good the four-wheel drive system is, I was going to say all-wheel drive, but these are four-wheel drive, uh, then stay tuned for that video because we did a slip test on all of them. So yeah, it's like, it's like March Madness here with mid-sized trucks. March mid-sized truck madness. I like the sound of that. Uh, so let me go back to kind of what um, my initial impressions were. Um, you know, as I get older, the seat becomes really important, and this has a really comfy seat. I was a little worried because the regular Ranger doesn't have a lot of bolstering underneath. Uh, this one has a lot more, uh, and so it's uh, actually very comfortable. Uh, and uh, for a big guy, I actually have a, a lot of room. And they're all about the same. I mean, they're all kind of, you know, it's not as big as a Ridgeline. Uh, the Ridgeline is by far the most car-like and uh, certainly the most comfortable, uh, but it is a very comfortable truck. Anything else, uh, Zach, that people are saying that I can answer before we uh, call this yeah, a week? Yeah, come, come on, come on over, so yeah. You can actually hear yeah. me. Yeah. Um, Eric was asking, you'll need to conduct another midsize truck battle with the highest trim of each of these midsize trucks. So Coming, Toyota, stay tuned. Yeah, Toyota Tacoma, TRD Pro, Nissan Frontier Pro 4X, uh, most of the other ones he specifically mentioned. Gladiator Rubicon, we are working on putting more comparisons together, so stay tuned. Yeah, that's definitely coming. Uh, the problem is a lot of those uh, trucks aren't out yet, especially Toyota. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, anything else that people are interested in? Cannot wait to see all the videos on the Ranger Raptor, Baby Raptor. There's just been a general sense of everybody's excited to see this truck and everything. Else yeah, and guys, you know, when we get a truck like this, we're so excited. It's not, it's not just me, but it's the entire team. And so I've already talked to uh, Tommy and the team and they plan on taking this thing to Moab next week. Uh, so uh, what happens here in Colorado is we have some great off-roading, but it, it's really hard in the winter because we get so much snow and this year has been really bad. Uh, so I think the guys are gonna jump in the truck uh, and take it off-roading next week. And as soon as we get some miles on it, we're also, gonna wanna, we're also uh, planning on doing a drag race against the Raptor. So regular Raptor versus Ranger Raptor, uh, and that is also coming up just to see how quick it is uh, compared to its a bigger brother. Uh, and if we can get a Raptor Army, we'll throw that in the mix as well. All right, what time is it? I think it's time to go home, Zach, isn't it? Guys, thank you for watching. Uh, we're trying to do more of these live streams. Uh, let us know what you think about the truck in the comments below. If you have any suggestions uh, that we should be doing with it, we'd love to hear them. And as always, check out alltfl.com for the latest in everything automotive and trucky. We'll see you guys next time. Ciao.